Okay, so we're going to go and take a, a look right now um, into how definite integrals relate to um, graphs. So let's say we have this graph, we'll call it the graph of f of x. Um, so then let's go ahead and take a look here at uh, the integral from negative 2 to 0 of f of x. We'll start with that. All right, now all these on here, this isn't perfectly drawn, I apologize, but all these are supposed to represent straight lines. So I have a straight line here, here, goes across horizontally for a little bit, and then comes back down. And you can see this point right here is negative 2, 2. This point here is 1, 1. That point there is 3, negative 1. You know, at all the other places, hopefully it's kind of clear what the points are. So, anyways, negative, the integral from negative 2 to 0 of f of x is going to be representative of the area under the graph of f of x from negative 2 to 0. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So here's our graph from negative 2 to 0. Um, I have this area that looks like this right here. I have this area here as well as this area right here. Um, so essentially all I need to do is to figure out what this integral is, and I can't evaluate this integral, okay, um, because I don't have a function there. If I had a function there I could just use the fundamental theorem of calculus and evaluate it. But I don't, so I can just go ahead and use my graph to find out what the value of the integral is. So I, I notice, okay, I have a triangle right there. It's got a, it's got a height of 2. It's got a base of 1, so that means that that is going to have an area of 1. Because it's a 1 half base times height. Another triangle here, it's got a um, base of 1. It's got a height of 1, so that's going to have an area of a half. So <clears throat> it's going to be 3 halves. So this integral is equal to 3 halves. If we knew what that function was, which we could figure out what that is, I guess it's a piecewise function on that interval, um, we could actually evaluate it and would come up with 3 halves. But it represents the area of the curve. So let's take a look at something here. Let's look, if we look from, say, from 2 to 3. Oops, from 2 to 3. There's probably 3 up here. Now, notice the, the graph of f of x goes below the x-axis here at 2 and is below from 2 to 3. Now, <clears throat> this still is definitely related to the area under the curve. And when I say under the curve, now I'm talking about this area right here. Okay, so that would be the area from 2 to 3. But whenever it's below the x-axis, it's going to come out negative. Okay? Um, that's how it works. And that's how it works if you, were, if you had an actual function that was below the x-axis and you evaluated it using that fundamental theorem of calculus, your answer would come out negative. Okay, so that's how it works. I know areas can't be negative, but that's how it works with integration. And you'll see how that will be good when we get to problems involving like velocity and stuff, because it'll tell us if it's, the integral's negative, the, you know, whatever the thing is, move to the left on that interval and so forth. But anyways, all we do is we figure out this area. It's got a width of 1, it's got a height of 1, it's a triangle, so that means that it's going to be um, negative 1 half is going to be what this integral is, since that area is 1 half and it's below the x-axis. All right, now if you had something like this, say we went to the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x dx, so that would be from here all the way to here. So we have a portion of that graph that's above the x-axis, another portion that's below the x-axis. <coughs> so the portion that's above the x-axis right there, that area we're going to count as positive. And it looks like we have a rectangle right here that is a width of 1, a height of 1, horrible scale on this one right here. So this area would be 1 right in here. This triangle has an area of a half, and this would be kind of like negative a half. So essentially, you, you find out your positive area, your negative area, and the positive and negative are going to cancel each other out. So basically, if you look at this, this 1 half is going to cancel out that 1 half, so we're left with 1. So again, if that was kind of weird and confusing, just add up your positive area, and you'll subtract your negative area from that. So if you happen to have more of the graph below the x-axis, it would come out to be negative. In this case, we have more of the graph above the x-axis. All right, let's see here. Um, a couple more examples of this to um, try and make sure we're, uh, we're good on this. Let's say I took that same interval from 0 to 3, but I said the absolute value of f of x. Okay. Now, what the absolute value does, it takes anything that's negative and it makes it positive. So anything that's positive is going to stay the same. Anything that's negative is going to become positive. So on this interval right here, from 0 to 1, 
this graph, right, or 0 to 2, this graph is positive the whole time. So nothing's going to change. But from 1 to 2, this graph is negative. So essentially it's going to reflect that portion of the graph in the x-axis because all these y values here that are negative are going to become positive because we're taking the absolute value of them. So essentially I'll just draw this, the graph what it would be as a dotted line, it would be up there. So it would have the same area but it would now be above the x-axis. So we're actually going to count this section as positive. Okay? So again, if you were to graph that out, it would just look like this. It would be this section of the graph would be the same and then this section would go up here. So this would be an area of 1, this would be an area of 1 half, that would be an area of 1 half, so overall that would be an area of 2. Which, so that integral would represent 2. Alright, let's uh, take a look at two more. Um, <clears throat> let's look if the uh, interval was switched. Let's say, for instance, we did the integral from 2 to 0 of f of x. Okay? Well, if we did from 2 to 0, you'll notice that's kind of funny because usually on all these, the smaller number is on the bottom. If, this, if the larger number happens to be on the bottom, okay, <clears throat> what happens is it's going to take whatever our answer is would be normally, and it's just going to be the opposite of that. So the answer normally is negative, it's going to be positive. If the answer is normally positive, it's going to be negative. So we still look on the interval from 0 to 2, and the area under that is going to be 1 plus a half, so that ends up being 3 halves. So it normally would be 3 halves, but since this interval is switched, it's going to end up being negative 3 halves. All right, and one last one here, and this one's always kind of a tricky one. Let's say that uh, we'll go with the integral, interval from uh, 0 to 2 of f of x plus 2. Okay, so in this case, you can kind of think of it in a couple ways. Um, what that does, that plus 2, what it's going to do is shift the graph up two units. Okay, um, but uh, usually how I like to think of it is I split this up in two integrals, because you're allowed to do that with integrals. So I can uh, make this an integral from 0 to 2 of f of x, and then I can do a separate integral from 0 to 2 of just 2. So again, I've split those integrals. You can do that when you have separate terms. The terms are things split by plus or minus. can't do that if it's two things multiplied by each other. So in this case here, the integral from 0 to 2 of f of x, we've already worked with that several times, that's just going to be 1 plus a half. It's the area under the curve from 0 to 2. So it's going to be 3 halves. This integral right here, we can either think of what the graph would look like, or we can just evaluate it by hand using the fundamental theorem of calculus, um, depending on what order you watch the videos in. If you haven't watched the um, video on fundamental theorem of calculus, we could think of this right here as just the graph y equals 2. Okay, dotted line. So that's y equals 2. And so the area under y equals 2 from 0 to 2 would just be a rectangle. It would just be 2 by 2, so this would actually just end up being 4. Okay? If you have seen that video on the fundamental theorem of calculus, um, you could you know, evaluate that integral if you wanted to by doing the antiderivative 2. So you'd get 2x, and then your interval would be from 0 to 2. So I'd take 2, plug it in for x, I'd get 4. Take 0, plug it in for x, I get 0, so minus 0, so I end up getting 4. Either way, you get 4. Alright, so let's see here. Then uh, we have 4 plus 3 halves. We just add those together, so that's going to end up being, let's see, that's 8 halves, so that's going to be 11 halves. Okay, which is the same thing as 5 and a half. So there you go. This is, uh, you know, you'll see a lot of stuff like this on the AP test, where instead of giving you a function, <coughs> they just give you a graph. And they want to see, do you get the concepts? Do you understand what integration is? As opposed to just, you know, knowing how to, you know, go through that uh, um, fundamental theorem. <clears throat> they want to see, do you have an understanding of what these actually mean in terms of the graph?